was first formed, then Eve. That's his first argument, really, to explain that is Adam was first formed, then Eve. That was the natural order of God's creation. That is the way that he intended to be. The woman came from man. That's the way God designed it. That's the way he wanted it to be. See, that's not fair. Well, the fair has nothing to do with it. That's in July. Good time now. Right? For Adam was first born. <laughs> Paul's like thinking about that. There is one in August too, but <laughs> the first week in September. <laughs> so, uh, so we see that God made Adam first and he gave man dominion over the woman. That's God's order. You go back to Genesis, you can see it. It's very clear. I mean, it's the order of creation. It's not hard to understand. It's very simple, but what has happened? The devil, that's what's happened. The same old lie that Eve was given. Eve's feminist dream. That Satan, the, Eve's feminist vision that Satan gave her of this, of this equality, of this godhood, of this exaltation. Same vision. Nothing's changed. Same game plan. Ye shall be as gods. You don't need God's order. You're a god yourself. What's that? Kenneth Copeland says he is a god. Is that what he says? The weirdos. Paul Crouch. They are in hell. Yeah, yeah. Crouch is in hell right now, burning, wicked sodomite devil. This is God's order, but one thing we see is the Jezebel spirit on the rise today in America. Man, do we see it ever. It is just pervaded. It has just invaded the churches, that Jezebel spirit, that absolute spirit. And I'm going to tell you something. The only way to defeat that Jezebel spirit, Jezebel spirit is to walk in the spirit and quit you like men and be strong. It's a shame... It's shame to a man for a woman to bear rule over them. We're going to talk about that the next hour, really. But God's order in the home is the same. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 22. I've preached on the order back in Genesis. I don't have to go there with you. You've already understand that. If you need to go back and you listen to those, all those messages we preached on that, we've covered those topics. But Genesis chapter 5, verse number 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As unto the Lord. Your submission is to your husband. So how could a woman be a preacher if her submission is to her husband? How could she lead a congregation? How could she lead a nation? And be a Christian? Yeah, there's no way a woman could be president. That's absolutely ridiculous. Does that make you mad? They're not qualified, by the way. They're not qualified to pastor either, which is a higher office, by the way, than the president. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. By the way, I make no apology for preaching this boldly, because it used to be that men would stand up and look you straight in your eye and preach the word of God boldly and not apologize for it. I'm so sick and tired of men apologizing for apologizing to you for the way God made things. I'm going to obey and follow him. If you don't like it, get right with God. Get on your knees and get right with God. I'm not going to apologize to you for God's order. I'm not, I'm not going to play games with it. I'm not going to sissify it to make you happy. I'm going to preach the truth of the word of God to you. And you ought to love God and you ought to love this book enough that you follow it and that you obey it. If not, quit playing games. Quit acting like you're spiritual. The big put on is all it is. The Bible says, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now, do you believe that? 
Do you believe God's Word? Well, look what it says here. It says the church is subject unto Christ. That's God's order. Do we, do we, are we equal partners with Christ then? Oh, we're equal partners. Marriage is a partnership. No, it's not. For real, though, check out that guy's beard. Is that intense or what? No, it isn't. It's not. Nowhere in the Bible says marriage is a partnership. Where'd you learn that at? You learned that from some marriage manual for some guy at some big college. It's probably sitting in prison now for fornicating. Oh, yeah, that would be it. A legacy of fornication. Mm-hmm. What's the Bible say? It says the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wise be their own. That doesn't sound like a partnership to me. Is it to you? You know, one of the, I'll tell you what, you may not be a woman preacher, but you might be without a pulpit. Do you hear me? You might not be a woman pastor, but you... My wife wants me to grow that beard back again. So in the wintertime, I told her when the first snow flies, the beard's coming back. And uh, we're going to see how, uh, how long I can get it for the, for the winter until spring hits. And then I'll, sh- I'll, I'll trim it back down again. You might be without a pulpit if you're not careful. Because you'll set your little bully pulpit up in the home and you'll decide that you're going to do things your way in your home. That you have more wisdom than your husband that does, that you're wiser than he, and you have all the answers more than he. I don't know why this makes me laugh. It's like, it's like Grizzly Cooley coming out of the wilderness or something. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he doesn't. He just doesn't understand things the way that you do. He just doesn't attain to the spiritual level as you do. So you know what? You're going to set your own pulpit up in your home, and you're going to start preaching. That ever happen? Yeah, it does. And you get a rebellious spirit where you're going to rebel against your husband's authority. We're going to rebel against his leadership, and you'll do it in the guise of spirituality. That you've attained to some spiritual knowledge that and wisdom that your husband just doesn't see or he doesn't have. So therefore, that gives you the, the moral authority and the spiritual authority to go ahead and usurp his authority and do what you believe is right. My Lord. Does that ever happen? You better believe it does. And it happens to some of the most godly people you'll find. Why is that? Because we forget God's order. By the way, did you know it's a, it's a lack of faith not to trust in God's order? When you think you have it all figured out and you think your way is going to be better as a lady, so you're going to do it your way. All right. Well, anyway, I'm going to get started here and uh, we'll get back to. (laughs) Yeah, that guy did yell a lot more than I do now. That was back in 2015, it looks like. That was four years ago, four and a half years ago, probably. Close to it there. And, uh, yeah, that picture is from Facebook, Mike, that you're talking about. That was at Jim's house, Jim Wilford's house in Texas. I got this big old buck knife uh, from, like, Harbor Freight or something. And uh, anyway, so that's where I got that at, and and uh, that's what I was doing. But I just put this on. I kind of got that idea from Pastor Hoggard. He played some clips, and I didn't have any music ready, so I thought, you know what, I'll just throw this on here and throw this old-school uh, Pastor Cooley sermon. Now, this isn't real old-school. I mean, there's some old-school way, way back that I could play, but anyway, this covered the topic that I'm going to talk about here today, and I'm actually not using these notes. I'm using, uh, you know, David Cloud's, um, yeah, actually, David Cloud's notes. Actually, Hannah said this, you should listen to the sermon that I did yesterday, and that you will listen to it. It'll go online. Um, I was preaching hard, and I had no amplification. I was outside, and I preached our church for probably 
about an hour uh, with no amp, and I let it go. I preached a message. I preached a message called Jesus Christ, the Eternal Word of God. And let me tell you, it was... It, the Lord used it. It was it was good. It was a blessing. So uh, we had we celebrated our twelfth anniversary for our church twelve years ago. This month we started Old Paz Baptist Church, and uh, we praise the Lord for that. And we had a good time out there together, um, and together with the church family, uh, we praised the Lord together and and had testimonies of all that. God has done for us through the years and and how he's kept us uh, through all those trials and all those tribulations. Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad that they helped. I you know there's different seasons for preachers and God has me in the in this season that he has me in now. But yesterday, that's why my voice sounds like this. I was yelling quite a bit, but uh Anyway, so I think the neighbors did hear it. You could hear it echoing through the neighborhood out there in the country where we were at. So it was kind of neat, actually. I liked the way it sounded. I liked it a lot. I actually re- I recorded it on my Mac, but Luke got it. I had a microphone in my hand, but it was only for recording purposes. It was like a prop, <laughs> so to speak, almost. But it was actually to record the sermon in good audio so he could use it. But really... Uh, it was, you know, it. I was yelling the whole time, almost. So anyway, it was a, it was a blessing. But um, well, God bless you too, Rick Rios from San Antonio, Texas. I hope you're doing well, and um, I hope all of you are doing well out there. I'm, I'm glad to be back on here. Uh, the Lord uses this broadcast for me as much as He does for you. And I say that because it keeps me focused on my work that God has called me to do and not to be distracted and with my own mind or my, my own uh, issues, but, but to um, meditate on the right things and keep myself focused on, on helping others, which is what God's called me to do. So I, I rejoice in the fact, and I'm thankful that you're all out there and that... that um, you do listen, and and these videos are doing well. The, the Lord's blessed them. I, I suppose they average somewhere around a thousand uh, or so uh, within a week or so, and uh, so that's good. Or a couple days, and we rejoice over that that more people can hear them. But they're left out there, so others can hear them eventually. Frolin is is here. I don't see him very often on here, so I'm glad he's here. Uh, Stephanie, thank you for that. Uh, Our church was very blessed yesterday to spend that time together out there at Brother Ryan's house, and boy, it went fast, I'll tell you. It it really does go fast when you're when you're rejoicing and having a good time, and and we sang some hymns and and spent just spent the day together uh, thanking God, and of course, eating a lot of food. My goodness, did we ever have a feast day? But um, it's good to have those once in a while, just not every day. Uh, let's see, who else is on here? The usual cast and crew. Jacob was first. I don't know how he got up there first, but he was. And Joe McDonald, a quick second. And then Hannah got in there third, and then Jessica got in there. Oh, Sylvia and Crusader for Christ. I don't know who that is, I don't think, but Ron uh, and The Authorized Mike. And there's Heidi Rain Country. And uh, she's been listening for a long time. So don't know how long that's been, but it's sure been a while. I'm sure of that. By the way, my I bought a skirt for my wife from Rain Country there, and uh, I like the way it looks. It's it really is cool. So if you if you like long modest skirts, you ladies out there, and you're looking for 
uh, a nice long modest skirt, a full skirt, and everything like that with some really uh, nice designs or whatever on those, you should go look at her page and and take a look at what she does there because she does a really good job with it. And uh, they they are really neat. So praise the Lord for that. Hope you cover accepting God's will, even if it's not what we want. Well, Frolin, I, I think I probably covered that my whole <laughs> ministry, at least the last year and a half, of accepting the will of God. You know, I preached a sermon. If you don't remember it, you can go back and listen to it. When God says no, and you know what? Sometimes God says no, and I've experienced that in my life. Alejandra Martinez, God bless you too. And um, praise the Lord for that. Mary is on here too as well. Cynthia, hi to you too. I hope you're doing well. And uh, Becky, good to see you on here. I hope you're doing well, too. Glad that you could catch it live here for a few minutes. I know I'm rambling a little bit. I've definitely got plenty to teach you, but I, I enjoy greeting people. And I wish I could meet all of you. And maybe someday I will. I know in heaven, if we're all born again by the Spirit of God, we've been saved by the grace of God. We'll all see each other there. But I'd like to see you here on this earth sometime. So as I'm traveling through um, different places, I, I used to like to meet up with people. I kind of shied away from that for a little while, but i got to get back into that. But uh, I I sure wouldn't mind meeting you if I'm ever in your area. Uh, I... I sure would uh, like to meet you and say hi. And You know, I, I mentioned this, that somebody sent me a donation um, to, to, go to, uh, to go to England. And I was kind of shocked. I mean, I... I wasn't expecting that at all and, and didn't even think about that. I just mentioned that out there. They're, oh, someday I'd like to go there. Well, they sent one, and now I'm trying to figure out what in the world I'm going to do because I need more money, obviously, but and, and some time to do that. But now i got to figure out how that's going to work. I, I've, I don't know, and I haven't been able to get a hold of the person that sent it. You know, So I, I like to be very careful with that. But um, anyway, so, but I, I'm sure I'd have a... A good time in England, and and actually Europe, period. I'd like to go over there. There's Baptist history over there. Even if they don't have a tour there, I'd like to see it. Texas. Yeah, I should come. And, I, I like Texas. Uh, I've been to Texas many times, and I do enjoy Texas for sure. And I enjoy the folks in Texas. The people are very kind. I like people down south. I like people up north, too. They just, it seems like people down south are nicer, even though I, even though I poke fun at their accent, I, I still, I do like them, so. And uh, I just give them a hard time. If you come to England, we'll come to England to catch up. Oh, that'd be great. I'd love to do that. Tulsa, Oklahoma. I have been to Oklahoma, uh, Andrew, and, and I've been to, oh, Hannah would remember. I can't remember. Oklahoma City, I think. But uh, and I was gonna go through Tulsa, but I didn't. But I, I think that's what happened. We were gonna drive that way, but we didn't. But hey, if I ever get out that way, I'll definitely look you all up and let you know. I like to hold services on Sundays, places because I really don't. I mean, unless I'm preaching at another church, I like to actually hold services at different places. Mary, somebody mentioned Canada to me the other day. And um, Canada would be a great place. I, I wouldn't mind going to Canada, actually. I, I drove all the way up to the border of Canada, a, a Minnesota border in Canada, and I had to turn around. They wouldn't let me in anyway. I had my guns on me. But um, Well, praise the Lord. Alondra, how long have you and your husband been listening to us? That's a blessing to hear. I'm really glad. 
People up north are me. <laughs> they are mean. People up north are mean. I don't. That's. I used to joke around with somebody about the pastries when I was in. I was in Connecticut once. I drove through Connecticut. I think it was Connecticut. Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, I think it was Connecticut, and I drove through there, and this lady made the best pastry I've ever had in my life, I think. One of them, anyway. And she said, and we, we joked about how in the world, how in the world uh, did, did are those so good? And, and somebody said, well, it's made with hate, so that's why <laughs> she was not nice. We were in there, went in there to get that pastry, and man, they were mean. Hey, people in Canada are probably nice. I'm sure they are. You know, we have a lot of people that listen to our, our messages in Canada. Just a ton of people really listen in Canada. They really do. So we've had, we've had quite a few people listen there uh, that listen there. On Sermon Audio, I check the stats uh, monthly and to see in Canada and and England are outside of the U.S. Canada and England are the two number one places uh, that listen to our sermons. So lots of people do out there, and we praise the Lord for that. Well, I've rambled on long enough. I could I could sit and talk to you for forever like this, but I, I feel like I wouldn't be doing you justice and teaching you anything and getting to the Word of God here for you, and, and I think I ought to do that. So... Um, Minnesota's cold too. I got warm clothes. Hey, I go out preaching in the cold, so we know how to preach in the cold, right? We know how to do that, eh? But um, we can handle it by the grace of God. We're good. We can do it uh, out in the cold. We got all the warm clothes. Jason O'Brien in England. I know. I like England, man. I want to go there. I know they'd hate my guts there if I went there, but there'd be some believers there I could fellowship with and preach to and encourage over there. But I'll tell you what, I'd like to preach in jolly old England. (laughs) Wouldn't they just love me? (laughs) Oh, man. Anyway, so my voice is a little hoarse from the midnight or the air out there. It was a little... uh, little cool out there when you're preaching out in that cold air sometimes it can it can be kind of funny all right well we better get going here um and get started i know there's some believers in in there and i i'm i'd be glad to meet him if i get over there and i've got a friend that got married over there he got saved here at our church when he left our church he got saved he's from england his name is hari hari and Hari got saved over there. Right? Or he got saved here, and then he went back to England. Hari did. And uh, and he got married over there. And he said if I come to England, he'd come and see me. So I, I hope that I'll do that. I'll return the favor maybe someday, Lord willing. We'll see. I'd like to get my wife with me. I don't travel well without her, so we'll see if she I can get her to go with me over there. We'll see what happens, but it would be a fun trip, that's for sure, and a blessing, I, I Lord willing. All right, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication and eat things sacrificed unto idols. All right, so here's the thing. We've got some issues here with the with the charismatic movement and Jezebel preachers. Jezebel women preachers. And there's plenty of them out there. I want to show you this video here of Marilyn Hickey. What a name, right? My name is Marilyn Hickey. How would you like to have that for your name? Anyway... All right, let me go here. Here we go. All right, now. I want you to read the, I want you to see the deception. Here's your favorite Antichrist character. You have put your hand on this town. I can see it. Just as easily as I can see. What 
does the Bible say about women in ministry? And I want to just share with you just the... Now, I want you to understand something here. As we get started with this, she doesn't tell you what the Bible says the whole time. She tells you about her feelings, but she does not tell you what the Bible says. And what she does mention about the Bible, she perverts. Okay? So just understand that as we get started. I know we got started a little late, so I might go over a few minutes here. But, but here's, I, I just, I want you to understand that she doesn't end up telling you actually what the Bible says. Personal call when God called me. I was 42 years old, pastor's wife, teaching the Bible, involved with teaching the Bible on radio and television a little bit. And I didn't know that I was called. I felt like as a pastor's wife and the anointing of my husband came on me. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, I've called you to cover the earth with the word. Oh. Okay, so God tells her, all right, so God tells her, that you're to cover the earth with the word. Well, shouldn't you be using, shouldn't the Bible, they believe in a spoken word and not a written word. They do not trust the written word of God. It is a spoken word that they that they go by. What, the, what a spirit tells them. Now remember what the Bible says, that we're to try the spirits whether they are of God. We're to try the spirits. Right. That's right, Rain Country. That's what it is. Oh, it's a personal call. God personally came to me. God skipped the pastor. God skipped the church. God changed his order. And God went directly to Hickey. Oh, I said, God, I am a woman. And God said, yes, I know that. But he said, that will never be your problem. So God said to her, he, she said, God, I'm a woman. And God said, I know you're a woman. But that's not, that's not your problem. <laughs> and right about now, I have to resist a lot of jokes. Okay, let's keep going. Your problem will be your faith. So I said, God, whose camp am I in? I don't know if the evangelicals will receive me or the Pentecostals or the Charismatics. He said, you will never be in a camp. You will be a bridge. You will go to... You're not going to be in a camp. You're going to be a bridge. You're going to be a bridge. You're going to be a bridge to all the heresies. You'll be the bridge that brings all the heresies together. That's what you're going to be. You're going to bridge all the cults together and all the false teachers together. You're going to be the biggest and bestest bridge you've ever seen in your whole entire life. All of the camps. And so this is key to us to hear from the Holy Spirit. So the Bible... Okay, so... The key is not, the key is not, all right? The key is not to hear the word of God, but to hear from the Holy Spirit. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly from the word of God, right? The Bible says the Spirit speaketh expressly. All right, let's look at that. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. So would you say a seducing spirit is to tell you something that is against God's word when God's word plainly says something? Plainly says something? Right? Right? That in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Well, this is a doctrine of a devil. 
Because it's usurping God's authority. It's usurping God's order. Talks about women in ministry, Old Testament, New Testament, and some of them in full-time ministry, and all of us to sanctify our homes, all, all women are to minister in certain aspects. Isn't that true? And so I looked at this and I thought, man, there's Deborah in the Old Testament. Well, there's Deborah. What about Deborah? If you haven't heard the sermon, What About Deborah? You ought to listen to What About Deborah? And other silly excuses women use to usurp authority over men. Yes, that is actually the title. She was quite a prophetess. That's full-time ministry. She's in the book of Judges. And I love how the Holy Spirit carried her. Then we see Huldah, also a prophetess in the Old Testament. But then we see that Philip in the book of Acts had virgin daughters who were prophetesses. This is New Testament. And so when we see people moving in the Word and in the power of the Holy Spirit, there's neither male nor female in Jesus. The big thing is for you to hear His voice and to know His voice. The greatest thing for... So the most important thing is for you to hear His voice. I agree. But if you believe it's in your head and not in the book, then you're going to be hearing a lot of voices and they just won't be good ones. And there'll be voices that'll trick you. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the, unto the Father by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath inherited he hath obtained an inheritance better than they, right? Or excuse me, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Here's the thing. These people, this woman wants you to listen to voices and not the clear teachings of the word of God. For you is to walk in his faith and his love. So I look at my life and I have to say, Really, I have been a bridge. I go to all kinds of churches, but I also go to all kinds of nations. When God spoke that to me, I'd be a bridge. Did I know I would go to Islamic nations and be accepted? I am a woman. I'm a Christian. I'm an old woman. And my biggest meetings are there. So the biggest thing for you to hear. Yeah, I wonder if they'd accept me there. Right? I wonder if they accept me there. Right? <laughs> As a woman is his voice. And, you know, a lot of people will tell you what you can't do. But let me just say this to you. God thinks you can do anything. No. Did you hear what she said? God thinks you can do anything. Where does it say that? Right? Where does it say that God says you can do anything? Listen to the verse that she perverts, and then I'm going to read you what the Bible actually says. Listen to this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. and I, I can do all things through Christ, she said, who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Do you see the difference? Which strengthens me? 
not who strengthens me. To change it around, what she is saying is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can do anything. I can do anything I want. Right? That's not what it says, though. It says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. I'll tell you what, not short on heresy here, are we? I remember when I first wanted to go on television and met with a secular board, and they said, you know, you are not television material. You should stay with the radio. You would never make it. Nine men, not born again, and one man said, I think we should try her. I think she'll pay her bill. Now, isn't that interesting? That was 45 years ago. And none of those men are in television, and I still am all over the world. So do what the Holy Spirit tells you. And, you know, it talks about women, you know, where it talks about them not talking. They were talking in church. And It talks about women. You know where it talks about women? It talks about women not talking. And if you read that in Corinthians, they were talking out loud to their husbands and asking questions. And Okay, so what she's saying is they were talking out loud in church, asking questions. That's the sole reason why Paul told them to be quiet. Not that God first formed Adam, then Eve. Right? You see the difference? It doesn't have anything to do with the order of the sexes or usurping the authority or anything like that. Do you see how she's changing everything? She's changing what the Bible says. This is what witches do. All right? I'm telling you, this is what witches do. These are the real witches. Let me tell you something. Yet A guy walked up to me that visited our church years ago. Today at, at, at uh, Cub Food, no, Target, at Target parking lot or whatever. I was coming out of Target, right? And when I was when I was walking out of the store, here come this guy, and he said, "You know," he goes, "How you doing, Pastor? I, you know, uh, I'm I'm going over to such and such church, and there's pe- people there, and they just start breaking out, sing, uh, sing, uh." breaking out, speaking in tongues. And he said some of them, he said one of the ladies has seizures. In order to control her seizures, she starts speaking in tongues. So that's what she does. She just starts speaking in tongues to stop the seizures. Well, when I got there, we were going to go somewhere, her and I, and we were all done with church, and she was still she was speaking in tongues. And then she was done speaking in tongues, and she said she couldn't go because she sat there in a trance the rest of the time. Right? So then the next thing he says to me is, and there's a guy that comes to church about every five weeks, and he walks up to me, and he puts his hand on me, and he tells me what my thoughts are. He actually tells me what my thoughts are. And he walks around to people in the room, and he tells them what, what's going on in their mind between them and God. Because he said, God shows them that. Now, what do you call those people? I call them witches. And they're going to fill the church of the Antichrist up, and they're going to persecute real Bible-believing Christians, right? That's what they're going to do. Look at this. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he was some great one. Right? To whom they all gave heed from least the greatest thing. This man is the great power of God. Are you listening to me? Pay attention. I wish I had my conehead witch hat, witch hat on here. I wish I had it around here. I don't have it. I'd put it on right now 
And I would tell you that that's what these people are. That's what they do. They're witches. Right? They're witches. Simon the sorcerer, he didn't deny there was a God. He was religious. I want you to understand that. He was religious. Look at Galatians 3.1. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you? They were bewitched by something. They don't have to have the witch's hat on. They don't have to be, they don't have to have the witch's brew going. They don't have to do any of that to be witches. They're bewitching you with another spirit. And that's what these women preachers do. That's exactly what they do. And let me tell you something about these, most of these women preachers. And I don't like it. It's, it's sad, but it's true. Most of these women preachers, right? Most of these women preachers, a lot of them anyway, not, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of them, they were either raped uh, or they were molested or something like that when they were younger. Paula White talks about it. She didn't say who did it, but she said that somebody did that when she was young. Paula White said that. All right. Uh, Joyce Meyer says the same thing. But they all have this agenda against God's order, and a spirit tells them that they can do what they want. And it empowers these women because they feel as if they have power over men. Do you understand that? They feel like they have power over men, so that's why they usurp God's authority and they're rebels against God. And it's sad. I'm sorry that that happened to them. I'm sorry that it happens to anybody. But the point is, that's what they were doing. That's what they are doing. And they end up being rebels against God and they're religious, but they are not. I do not believe these people are saved. I believe they are religious witches. And I'm not saying that because I want to be mean to them. I'm saying that because it's the truth. It's an agenda against God's order. That's what it's against. I know I'm going to get to all that, but that's what they're doing. So she's making up some excuses and some lies and some other things. Beth Moore, the same way. Beth Moore was sexually abused somehow. I don't know how, but I, and it doesn't really matter. But she was, and what does Beth Moore do? She has an agenda against all, oh, they're a bunch of misogynists. They're against women preachers. You're a misogynist. You're this, you're that. You're all these things. Well, one thing doesn't mean the other. But that's what they do. It empowers them over men. They believe they have this empowerment over men. Right? They were causing confusion in the church. And so this is where, and remember, women were separated from where men sat and men could hear better. Well, honey, what's he saying? They said, no, you're causing confusion. So we don't want to. Yeah, because with preachers, they couldn't hear. So nobody could hear the preacher preach. That is so stupid. That is so stupid. She doesn't even show a Bible verse for any of that. She just tells you that's what it is. Right? 
she just tells you, well, that's what the deal was. So, you know, that's all that matters. You're just not supposed to talk in church. That's all it is. Wow. I want to cause confusion, but we want to hear his voice and we want him to use us in every possible way. Thank you. Thank you. For watching Sarah and me on YouTube, we're so glad. Oh my goodness, we're elated to get to hang out with you. Make sure you click here to subscribe today. Who in the world is that? I have no idea. Anyway, okay. So, they don't get it from the Word of God. They get it from their own vain imagination, all right? Now, now we're going to get into women preachers here, okay? And we're going to talk about it doctrinally, all right? We'll talk about it doctrinally and cover some of these subjects uh, about women preachers here. I think it's important. It's very important. I've taught on this before. That uh, in all new age, that's the counterfeit women use against Christianity to destroy it. Yeah, okay. Well, I, I don't. I understand the new age movement. I understand feminism and I understand witches. Um, here we go. Are you ready? Now we're going to give you kind of the history of women in the charismatic movement because charismatic churches empower women to do this. They absolutely empower them to do this. And you cannot pander that Jezebel spirit. You got to understand something. You, you can't pander that Jezebel spirit. You got to have a mean old burly preacher like this. Okay. You have a preference or a way that you believe is going to be is right to do it, and you believe you have the moral high. Hear it? You definitely got it the second time. Taken away from the role that God has made for them, and I'll tell you one thing: it's very sad that this sort of message is not preached any longer from Baptist pulpits. And the reason it's not preached is because men are afraid of women. That's why. Because men are afraid of what their wives are going to say. Pastors are afraid about what the women in their congregation are going to think. That's right. And if you preach keepers at home, if you preach the order of, a, of the home correctly, then guess what happens? Women go home. And if those pastors really believed God, they would know that it wouldn't hurt their ministry any. It would help it. But it won't help you build a corporation, but it will help you build a godly church. Amen. You got to have a mean old burly preacher like that come up and talk about it. You got that Jezebel spirit don't go nowhere unless it's preached out. All right. And I've seen it in a lot of men and I've had a lot of them leave. I've had a lot of women get mad at me. I've had it happen. And I know it. And, th and these doctrines make make women mad. They make men mad too. limp wristed. Seventh-day Adventist men mad, too. All right. Women are very prominent in leadership within the Pentecostal charismatic movement and have been from the beginning. A woman, Agnes Osmond, was the first to speak in tongues in Charles Parham's Bible School in 1901. Now, when you go back to Azusa Street, let me ask you a question here. Why is it that a woman was the first one to get the Babylon going there? That the Babylon Brook came from the woman? Think about that. That's where it came from. And who fights the hardest for that for for that for that for speaking in tongues? Who fights the hardest for that? It's women. Women fight the absolute hardest for that. Why? Cuz it started out as rebellion. And that's what it is, is rebellion. And they're more susceptible to, susceptible to devils, too. They can be deceived easier than men. In 
1911, Osmond married Philemon LaBerge, and they traveled the country preaching together. Many women were in leadership positions at the Azusa Street Mission, including Jenny Evans Moore, Miss J.W. G.W. Evans, Phoebe Sargent, Lucy Farrow, Ophelia, Wiley, Clara, Lum, and Florence Crawford. William Seymour's wife, Jenny, took over the pastorate at Azusa after William's death. Did you hear that? Think about that. Many women were ordained and went out from Azusa, Azusa Street, including Florence Crawford, Daisy Batman, Mabel Smith, I, Ivy Campbell, Lucy Leatherman, and Julia Hutchins. It was a female student who prophesied in 1948 of the revival that was to come to the Sharon School, Sharon School in North Battleford, Saskatchewan. Many of the founders of Pentecostal denominations and ministries were women. Mad Magdalena Tate founded the Church of the Living God, pillar and ground of the truth of truth. Florence Louise Car Crawford was the founder of the general over and the general overseer of the Apostolic Faith Church. Ida Robinson was the founder of the first bishop and first bishop of Mount Sinai Holy Church in America. Amy Semple McPherson founded the International Church of the Foursquare Gospel. Susan and Haiti Duncan founded Aleem Tabernacle and Rochester Bible Training School. Minnie Tingle, you farson? No, I'm just kidding. No, it's not the word, but Minnie. <laughs> Minnie Tingley Draper founded two churches and was president at Bethel Pentecostal Assembly Missionary Board. Are you getting the picture here? All these Pentecostal denominations are led around by a bunch of women and a bunch of limp-wristed men that have absolutely no testosterone left inside of them. I mean, none at all. I mean, they got no testosterone at all in them. And they're being led around by women. Alice Bella Gerigason founded the Pentecostal Assemblies of Newfoundland. Florence Crawford founded the Apostolic Faith Mission. Frida Lindsay was the president of the Christ for the Nations. Alice Evelyn Luce founded the Berean Bible Institute in San Diego. Myrtle Bial founded the, and pastored the 3,000-seat Bethesda Missionary Temple in Detroit. Michigan, 3,000 people. Christine Amelia Gibson founded the Zion Bible Institute in Providence, Rhode Island. Many of the pioneering Pentecostal evangelists were women, including Carrie Judd Montgomery, Louise Nankivel, Rachel Sizelove, Leonore Barnes, Mildred Wicks, Louise Nankeville, Fern Huff Sutter, Sutler, Elizabeth Sison, Thelma Cheney, Juanita Coe. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. The Assemblies of God received ordained women at its first general council in 1914. And by 1936, there was one ordained woman for every four ordained men. So one out of every four. If there was four men, right? If there was four men, one woman ordained. For every four ordained men, uh, for today there are almost... 4,000 licensed and ordained women in the Assemblies of God. 4,000 women ordained in the Assemblies of God. 4,000 Jezebels. That's a lot of Jezzies. If they lived in town, in a town it would be Jezopolis. In 1993, 38% of the ordained ministers in the International Church of the Four Square Gospel were women. Some of the prominent charismatic women preachers today include Gloria Copeland, Jan Crouch, Mar Marilyn Hickey, 
Joyce Myers, Annette Caps, Francis Hunter, Carl Arnott, Cindy Jacobs, Jan Hansen, Daisy Osborne, Ann Gimenez, and this is the mere tip of the iceberg. Consider some statements by female Pentecostal preachers. May Eleanor Fry. She said this. Now listen to this. Listen to this. May Fry. She said this. God Almighty is no fool. I say it with all reverence. Would he fill a woman with the Holy Ghost, endow her with ability, give her a vision of souls, and then tell her to shut her mouth? Hmm. No, but he did tell her to shut her mouth. That's what he did say. He said, shut your mouth. It's not permitted for you to speak. It was said more than once. Ida Robinson said, if Mary could carry the word of God in her womb, then I could carry the word of God on my lips. Why do they believe that because they feel as if they have the ability to do it, that they have the permission to do it? Think about that for a second. Just because you have the ability to do something doesn't mean you have the permission to do it. Think about it. Consider some statements, though, that, that in her autobiography, Elizabeth Sison describes sitting in an, in an Episcopal ordination service wishing she were a man so that she could be ordained. But she claimed that later she saw Christ in a vision speaking the words, I have ordained you. So it reminds me of Joseph Smith when he looked over at his best friend and he was like, or one of his men, he goes, God told me that I could have your wife. Right? That's what he said to him. And the guy said, no. Or he said, give me your wife. That's what he said. And he said, no, that's my wife. I'm not giving that to you. I'm not giving her to you. Right? So then what happens? So then he falls down on a trance in the ground. He falls down, has it in a trance. Excuse me. In a trance, on the ground, falls down has an epileptic fit, has a seizure. And then what happens? He says, well, God told me I could have her. Well, okay, if God told you, I mean. Yep, that's what she said. I use my hips and my lips. That's what Paula White said. But, you know, here's another clip I could show you. Pastor Christina. Go back to your seat and say neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know how bad you've been feeling. I don't know what you've been crying about. I, I don't know what the devil has been putting in your mind I don't know what the devil has been putting in your spirit but the Lord sent me in here on a Thursday night to let every devil know to let every demon know that the worst is over and the best is yet to come excuse me excuse me God ain't through with me yet construction. I've been down a little while. I've been broken a little while. But guess what? I want you to come back and check on me again because God ain't through. I 
say God ain't through with me yet. Is there anybody that'll throw your hands up and say if God, if God be for me, then who can be against me? Is there anybody that'll open up your mouth and say I know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could ask or think. Is there anybody that'll open up your mouth and say, devil, you've been after my family. Devil, you've been after my joy. Devil, you've been after my peace. But I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. I said, I'm so glad. Ah! I'm so glad that I made it. She's kind of part rooster here. Or maybe not. Or chicken or hen or something. Because when she gets her arm like this, I mean, and she starts wiggling her head, all I can think about is like the funky chicken or something. Like a, like a, you know, like a chicken. Into the house of God. I'm so glad that I made it. I made it. I, I, I made it. Is there anybody that got joy? Go find you a place. Where she had to reach for her miracle. She had to grab her miracle. Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody that'll open up your mouth and reach for your miracle? I've got the. Re what, what does that even mean? What in the world does that even mean? Ha! Is there anybody that can reach for your miracle? How do you open up your mouth and reach for your miracle? Reach for my blessing. I've got to reach for my healing. I've got to reach for my breakthrough. I've been waiting. The breakthrough. See, those are all charismatic witchy poo languages right there, okay? Been for a long time. Is there anybody that knows you've been waiting? Is there anybody that knows you've been Like, I, I'm trying to figure out, like, like, she's not saying anything. And these people are, like, acting like they're getting something out of this. It's like a motivational pep talk in the hood. To see God show up. I've been praying for God to move. And I'm so glad. I don't care if it's 18 years. I don't care if it's 12 years. I'm ready, I'm ready, ah, I'm ready for this next miracle, move out of my way, I'm about to get it, move out of my way, I've been crying, move out of my way, I've been hurting, is there anybody that said Jesus, 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 I'm leaning on the other lasting arms. I need you. I need you. I need you. I need the Lord. Is there anybody? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like... It's... it's it's like a chicken on crack. <laughs> like she just keeps. It's like a chicken on crack. I mean, she bounces up and down with her head like that, and it's like, it's like a a a chicken pecking the ground, <laughs> like over and over again. Oh man. Anyway, okay. Um, but could you imagine doing this for like? Uh, could you imagine doing this for like? Um. 45 minutes to 50 minutes in, in, in a service.
So one critic comes on here, now wrong is right, and says, I've listened to you mock and belittle these people. Um, you mean like Elijah did when the prophets of Baal were on the mount? You know, I thought about this today, actually. And I'm not destroying my witness at all. As you falsely accuse me, you're saying I'm destroying my witness by exposing these people. My witness is power, love, and a sound mind. That witness is devils. And if you got a problem with it, you know what you can do? Turn it off. Turn it off. That's what you can do. If you don't like it, turn it off. Right? If you don't want to hear what I have to say about it, then turn it off. You come on the comment section, you say things like that. If you don't like it, turn it off. We're not given license to belittle and laugh. That's your opinion. If you don't like it, don't listen to it. It's called an expose. That's what it is. And it's exposing what's there. And yeah, I have my own attitude. That's me. I actually have a personality. You don't have to like it. You don't have to like it. I never asked you to. Anyway, here we go. So, that's a perfect example. That right there is a perfect example of what it is. And here is the example. I'm exposing your little witches that you love, and you don't like it. Because you love this wicked stuff. And that's why you're mad at me. And that's why you came on here to say that. And I'm going to tell you, just like I tell all those other charismatics, get right with God. Turn from your nonsense and your garbage and your fake and phony spirits and get saved by the grace of God. That's what you can do. So what does the Bible say about it? says this in 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 14. It says, Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. I know, I just got rid of them. So the Bible says very clearly the restrictions upon women in ministry. It says why. 1 Corinthians 14. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Let's see, 1 Corinthians 14. Where do I want to start? Oh, I think I want to start 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Now, 
if this was just about asking a question, why didn't he say it was a shame for women to ask a question in church? No. He said it's a shame for women to speak in the church. To speak in tongues or to preach? What? Came the word of God out from you or came it only by you? Came it unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge the things that I write unto you. It is important to observe that there are two restrictions in 1 Timothy 2.12. The woman is not to teach men, nor is she to usurp authority over men. So let's go back to that verse. It says, women, it says, let the women learn in science with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach. That's not talking about asking questions. It's talking about teaching. Nor to usurp authority over the man. She's not to teach, nor is she to usurp authority over the man. This means that a woman cannot hold a position of authority in the church. She also cannot teach a mixed Sunday school class composed of men and women or preach to a mixed crowd of men and women. Women, God never wanted women to stand up and preach to men and women in in an open assembly with boldness like that. That's not what he called them to do. Right? He didn't call them to do that. He didn't tell them to do that at all. In 1 Corinthians 14, Paul per, per, uh, forbids women to prophesy or to speak in tongues in the service when men are present. The Bible restricts church leadership positions to men. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is the usurping of authority. It says here... Uh, this is this is what is speaking against usurping the authority. This is true. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. A man, a bishop, then must be blameless. The husband of one wife. Right. The husband of one wife. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, no striker, not greedy of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. This is the husband of one wife. This is the requirements from God. Right? No woman can fulfill the requirement of a husband of one wife. Now, get this. Here's a few facts for you to think about. All right? One, there were no female priests in the Old Testament. None. Right? There were no female priests in the Old Testament. Two, there were no female rulers chosen by God over Israel during the kingdom. When the kingdom was set up, God never anointed a woman to be to be king or queen over Israel. Next, there were no female authors of of biblical books. Four, there were no female apostles. There were no female apostles. Next, 
There were no female pastors in the early churches. You don't find one female pastor in the Bible or one woman ordained in the Bible. And for the following reasons, we know that the aforementioned restrictions were not limited to the first century. That's what some of them say. Oh, that was a first century thing. That's all that was. Well, where does it say that in the Bible? Right? That it was just a first century thing. It doesn't. It says the opposite. And that's what we're going to give you today here. First, Paul's letter to Corinth, in which he spoke of women being in subjection to men, was for all Christians, not just those in Corinth. Look at verse 1 Corinthians 1, 2. Under the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Right? It is clear that Paul's instructions were not intended merely for a peculiar situation at Corinth. Second, Paul said that his instructions in 1 Corinthians 14 are the commands of the Lord. Yeah, look at verse 17, or verse uh, 37 here in 1 Corinthians 14. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant still. That's right after he says, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. They have no permission to speak. And here's another thing for you, pastors. You're not allowed to give them permission to speak. You don't have the authority to give women the, 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 uh, the permission to speak in the assemblies. You don't have that. You don't have that. Pastors don't have the right to give them authority to do that. They don't have the permission. I don't have the permission to let a woman speak. Since these are the commands of God, what Paul says, if any man think himself to be a prophet, right? Any man, by the way. Think himself to be a prophet or spiritual. Let him acknowledge the things that I write and you are the commandments of the Lord. So if you think you're a spiritual person, if you Jezebel women out there that are out there preaching, if you think that you're a spiritual person, you're a prophetess and you're called of God and you're all of these things, Paul says, if you think you're spiritual, if you think you're a prophet, then you acknowledge the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Right? That's what he said. And one of those commandments, the, these and such they are they must be obeyed by all Christians by every church. These were not Paul's own opinions and prejudices. And one of those commandments was this let your women keep signs of the churches, for it's not permitted to them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. The law said the same thing. Jew, Jewish women in the Old Testament weren't allowed to go to the temple and places like that. They weren't allowed to, to go preach. They weren't allowed to usurp authority. They weren't allowed to do those things. As also saith the law. What law? How God set the order down of the sexes. That's God's law. That's what he said. And see, here's the thing. People like that person that just came on here that's some troll 
they come on and say, oh, you laughed at them. You said she looked like a chicken when she was doing that, and you're not supposed to do that, so therefore you're wrong. No, it's what God's Word says. Whatever failures I have is one thing, but whatever God's Word says is another. And this is God's Word. And people like that manifest when they try to pull something out to try to point a finger at you. They're trying to take away from this teaching right here. And why is that? Because they got the same stinking spirit. That's why. They have a spirit like this. Uh, maybe they don't like charismatics, but they got, a, they got a spirit like this, and they can help it, and it raises the cackles up on them. And I've seen it before, and I'm telling you, they can't take it. They got to say something. Because it bothers them. The boldness and the straightforwardness bothers them. It bothers them. They hate it. And people with that Jezebel spirit absolutely hate it too. They hate a bold man that will come out and say something. They like those L and G white people. They like them. Or maybe they like more sophisticated men like men like John MacArthur and men like that who are wrong about the mark of the beast and who are wrong about the blood of Christ. Well, you might like those polished men. Maybe you do. Maybe you like them. Good. Well, go listen to them. I'm going to tell you what we need today. We need some men that will stand up and not be afraid of what they believe and say some things and not cower in the corner. To a bunch of leather-tongued Jezebels and to a bunch of limp-wristed men. And I'm starting to think the limp-wristed men are worse than the leather-tongued Jezebels. I really am. Third, the apostle said that the instructions of 1 Corinthians 14 are a test of spirituality. Those who reject the teachings of 1 Corinthians 14 concerning a woman's role in the church prove that they are unspiritual. These people prove that they're carnal and they're not saved. They're not born again. They don't love the Lord. Right? Right? Now, they may be wrong about it and get right about it, so they may be saved. I don't know. There could be some out there that are saved. But after you've been showed the plain word of God and you can't accept that, or you choose to rebel against the plain word of God when it comes to something so obvious as this, fourth, First Timothy, which contains the rule that women cannot teach nor usurp authority over the man, was written to teach the proper order of the churches in general. But if I tarry long, he said, let's go to that verse, 1 Timothy 3.15. But if I tarry long, so after these instructions are given, but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. He's saying that, listen, this is the, this is the church of the living God. There's a proper behavior that goes on there. And it's not that stinking, it's not, man, where is it? Does this look like that proper behavior? That's crying out, saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, no other. What is that? That's chaos. Right? It's chaos. Because the Lord will be the builder of it. Because you follow his order. That's why. And that's when the bearded one comes see, out of the wilderness. We don't want to do that today. We want to take on the world's methods and attract the world. <laughs> but if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. He wrote those things in Timothy Right? He, 
he he wrote those things in Timothy. About the reason he wrote them was was due to the fact that the order was messed up, and Timothy had to set, or that Timothy had to set the order that was right. That this is what women do, this is what men do. Fifth, the things contained in First Timothy are to be kept until Jesus returns. Look at First Timothy six. Look what he says, verse 12, fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God, who quickeneth all things, and before Christ Jesus, whom before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession, that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Sixth, in giving instructions about women in the church, the Holy Spirit referred to the original order of creation. Adam was created first, then Eve. Look at that, 1 Timothy 2. Let's look there again. In like manner also women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety. Not with broided hair, gold, or pearls, or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man to be in silence, but to be in silence. He gives the reason, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Right? The man was created to lead and the woman was created to be his helper. Since the order of creation has not changed and since it does not change in any culture or century, we know that the instructions about the women's role in the church still apply to us today. Seventh. Paul referred to the fall to support his teaching on the Christian women's subjection to men. Again, this shows that the apostles' teaching about the women transcends any one culture or time. Oh, that's the way it was in Israel, but that was their culture. No, that's not what he said. That isn't what he said. Eighth, Paul referred to human nature to support his teaching regarding women, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. The woman has a different makeup than the man. She was designed for a different role in life, that of a wife and mother. Her emotional, uh, 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 psychological, excuse me, and rational makeup is geared perfectly for this. But she was not designed for leadership. In the Garden of Eden, the devil deceived her. Adam also sinned, but he was not deceived. Eve allowed herself to be thrust into a position of a decision-making she she was not supposed to occupy. It is not coincidence that women have been responsible for starting many of the false Christian movements that have played key roles in spiritism, New Age, and mind science cults, Seventh-day Adventism, and such human nature has not changed, and neither has God's restrictions against women preachers. Right? God didn't change his role and what he commanded for women. The, the order of the sexes, the reason he goes back to the order of the sexes is because that's the law of God. That's Nothing's changed. That's the law that God put in place. It's the way that it's supposed to be. So women are not to usurp authority over the man. They are not to lead in the church. They are not to lead in the home. They're to guide the home. But a husband is supposed to rule well his own house. It's 
So we'll answer the what about Deborah question here shortly. Now, I have a long sermon on that. Let's see if I can find it here. Let's see if it was on here. Let's see. Here's um that's a different one. Let's see. Let's see if I can find it here. I don't see it on here. Is that it? No, that's not it. Well, I'm not sure. It's not pulling up there. I know it's on Sermon Audio. Oops, wrong one there. All right. Oh, come on. Here it is. What about Deborah and other silly excuses women use to usurp authority over men? Preached 524 of 2015. Right? So you can here's the whole series of uh, the menace of feminism, and you can listen to that if you'd like sometime. All right, but David Cloud says this in his work: it was a day. Uh, what about Deborah? Answer: It was a day of apostasy. Now the key for the key phrase and theme of of the book of Judges was this: there was no king in Israel. And every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Right? It was a day of apostasy. And the men were weak. Just like, look at Isaiah 3.12. Look at this. This is another time. Let's see. Isaiah 3.12. As for my people, children are their oppressors and women rule over them. That's not a good thing. That's a bad thing. It's a reverse in the order. And the men were weak. Look at Judges. And for a complete answer to that subject, you can go, you can listen to that sermon and you'll have a complete expose. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Right? But if you do go to, let's see, Hebrews, uh, let's see, see, look what it says here. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak. And of Samson and of Japhetha, of David also, and of Son- doesn't mention Deborah, right? Doesn't mention Deborah there. Deborah understood that it was not proper for women to lead. 
Further, this isolated Old Testament example cannot be used to overthrow the clear teaching of the New Testament. Now, let me say this to you. I want you to understand this right now. When you find somebody that wants to ignore plain Bible teaching, plain systematic Bible teaching about a topic, right? That it says, thus saith the Lord, it's very clear. And they want to do, they do it by using a, an obscure verse somewhere to pull it in there, right? And they use it to try to prove their point. That is usually a cult member or a cult leader that does that, or it's somebody that doesn't know the Bible. It's, it's one of those people like that because they don't know the scriptures and they're trying to teach you something that's against plain English. Or plain in the plain understanding. Okay? You can't overthrow the entire teaching of the book uh, or of the New Testament on women and the entire order of the sexes all the way through for one example of Deborah who didn't even fight the war and she just stood there and didn't really do anything. So you can't ignore all the Bible for that. You just can't. Okay, how about this one? How about Acts 21, 8 and 9, Philip's daughters, like she mentioned? Well, what about Philip's daughters? Okay. Acts 21. And the next day, they, we that were of Paul's company departed and came into Caesarea, and we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, which were virgins, The same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. Okay. Was that a church service? No. Was that them preaching to all the men? No, it says they were in their father's house. They were prophetesses, but when God wanted to speak to Paul, what did he do? He called a male prophet from another place. Look at this. So here's these prophetesses, right? So they must be they must be the people of God. They're the prophetesses, so they must be the 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 uh the the preachers, right? No. Look what happened. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which should prophesy. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and he shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. They weren't in charge of anything. They weren't leading anything. Right? Right? How about Acts 2.18? Here's another one women like to use, those women. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Well, what is... The answer to that is the passage does not say to whom they will prophesy or in what context. Women have a very important teaching ministry, but it's directed to women. Titus 2.
that the the aged women, likewise, that they be in behaviors becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Right? Women have a very important role. It's to women and children. Right? To say that a woman's ministry is restricted is not to say that women are not valuable for the ministry. Paul had female co-workers that did things. Phoebe is an example of a female co-worker that did things, but she wasn't the preacher. She wasn't a preacher either. Priscilla is mentioned alongside her husband, Aquila, in the church planning ministry. Women are exceedingly valuable in the Lord's ministry, but he has placed some restrictions upon their service. See, God put, their, God put an order to that. He put an order to where they were allowed to be and what they were allowed to do. Well, coming home to this, what you find here... What you find here is Beth Moore, and she's cracking a joke, and I make no mistake about it. I personally believe Beth Moore's a witch. I absolutely believe it. The way she has bewitched those people in the Southern Baptist Convention, I think she's a witch. Just the whole way she acts. If you watch some videos of Beth Moore... Just the way that she acts, the charismatic way that she acts. Now, she doesn't speak in tongues or anything like that. It's just the way that she does it, right? Living Proof with Beth Moore is sponsored by... We got a calling on our lives. We got a reason why we're on this planet. And it's going to take strength. It's going to take might, and it's going to take more than we have. I wonder, I don't know, how many locals do I have here this weekend? I'd love to know that. Do, do you know what you're... I mean, extremely immodest right there, the way she's dressed. Anyway, with those skinny, tight jeans on and everything. Just ridiculous. This city. I'm going to bring it up. I, I wish I could say Latin in a way that would not be insulting. There it is. There it is. To seek after him. He desires to be known. And in such present Timothy chapter 3, but understand this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, blasphemers, disobedient to So you have here, and, and here, here she is. Living Proof with Beth Moore is sponsored by the theology of God as the greatest pleasure of our lives. We would be woefully and beautifully freed for, from so many of our appetites toward things that are pleasures of sin. Concordance, and you could run one of those words and see hundreds of times that word comes up. You could look up the word love. You could look up the word face of all the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. I mean, like no more has he decided that all variety belongs to the I mean, you can't get those genes any tighter, right? So here's the woman preacher, right? And, I mean, they, they all have their stories out there. Um, right, wow. Doctrinal Watchdog. I haven't, I haven't watched this yet. This is this is Todd uh, Bentley, but, or I mean Todd uh, Frio. But anyway, so here's my other ones on this. Beth Moore, the Southern Baptist Convention Compromise. All those other things. Paula White versus Beth Moore. Who's worse? Um, so what you have here is you have the Southern Baptist Convention now compromising with Beth Moore. And in this ad, 
or in this uh, JD Griff, or, or I mean JD. Um, oh, I forgot his name. Anyway, from the pulpit and pen here, he says he says that um, he uh, this Tom. A- Askel joins Beth Moore for a joke about her sinful rebellion. So they're actually joking about about her coming to preach at his church, and they're laughing about it, right? Don't add my signature to my broadcasting screen. I don't even know how to add my signature to my broadcasting screen. Anyway, so that's – and he he cracks a joke with this lady about her rebellion, right? And it's just – it's just ridiculous. It's just it, – it really is ridiculous. And the fact that all these men could sit there and watch this woman preach to them is absolutely ridiculous. So, anyway, it is what it is. But, um, sadly. uh, But you have what the Bible says about it. It's the charismatic people that are still doing it today. And now the Southern Baptist Convention is starting to do it even more. And, um, sadly. um, And... I suppose they will continue to go up from there. Uh, And we're going to see that worse. We're going to see, because the end times, the Bible says that that Jezebel, that Jezebel, would seduce the, the servants of the Lord to sin, right? That's what Jezebel would do. And that's exactly what happened. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants, to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. So anyway, crazy stuff, but it's there, and uh, we've got to be ready for it and exposing that charismatic movement. Uh, is it's an important thing, I believe. It, it it helps people understand a lot. So I don't think anybody has any questions here. I'm getting ready to take off here. Um, about done for today here. Uh, we'll be back with you on Wednesday, and we're going to work on on some things for the for production. We I've got some other things. I've got some powerpoints that have never been put on that Luke and I have to put some videos together for. So we'll be releasing those sometime in the near future. We are way behind on some a few projects that we want to get done. So we, we've got to catch up to that. There's some new ones that I'm going to be producing this winter, Lord willing, uh, soon anyway. I, I would like to actually, one thing I would like to do is I want to, I want to teach a PowerPoint on dragons in the Bible and dragons in history. So... I, I will probably put that together sometime soon in the future and a few other creationist ones and some other things like that for the creation ministry and uh, things like that. So we want to do some of those things. So you pray for us that the Lord would allow us to continue to keep doing that and uh, that he'd be honored and glorified by what we do. And you keep praying for us as we continue to serve the Lord and, um, you know, um, live for him and and serve him and and uh, pray coming up in October. Let me see if I can find this for you while I got you on here. Let me see um Okay, and I'll probably do a broadcast or two about this. I'm assuming that I'm probably I'm assuming that I'm probably going to do I'm going to do um a OPBC live on Halloween and we'll talk about Halloween. Um I appreciate that. Uh Heidi, thank you for that. Um you should look up Sandy Krakowski. 
Yeah, send me send me the information on it, Mallory. Uh, I'll, well, I can look it up. That's okay. Yeah, I'll look it up and see. Uh, I, I don't know who that is. Um, this is the Halloween capital of the world, Anoka, Minnesota. Right. So they'll have a schedule here. That's gonna start here pretty soon. Where's their schedule at? Or if they have it. Here we go. Events. All right. Uh, Anoka Classic Car Spooktacular. Pumpkin Way Off. Blood Mobile. Wine and Canvas Night. Pumpkin Bowl. I don't know what that is. Halloween Party at the Library, Scavenger Haunt, Movie Night. Let's see. They, like, really get into Halloween here. I wonder when the parades are. 33rd Annual Grey Ghost. The Grand Day Parade. When's that one? That's October 26th. That's the parade during the day. Oops. And then there should be a night parade. I don't know where that is. I don't see it. Maybe I missed it. I know they have a, a parade at night, too. Anyway, we'll be preaching a lot there. We're also going to be preaching this event. I'll show you. Coming up. We've taken a few weeks off. But um, this is the event we'll be preaching at outside of. Wow, it is October 12th. Give us your brains. No thanks. Creepy people. This is the zombie pub crawl. And uh, we'll be down there preaching at this event. This is pretty nasty. It gets pretty bad. But we'll be out there. We will be out there preaching October 12th. That's a Saturday, I believe. October 12th, Minneapolis. You pray for us. They look pretty creepy. So and they act creepy too. They'll punch you. They'll do. One of one of uh, a fellow that went with us, he he got punched. So anyway, um, it happens. So you pray for us as we uh, do these events coming up here. But have a good night. We'll we'll uh, we'll talk to you then on Wednesday. Praise the Lord. <laughs>